Okay, now it really is time to find your chair. Let's let's uh, get settled in and let's get let's get back to work here. Hello, everybody. My name is Ryan Eust uh, Eustace, and uh, I'm going to do a co-presentation with Joanna Nelson, um, kind of on New Mexico, uh, the Economic Development Department, opportunities zones, and kind of what we're doing going forward. Uh, and then we will turn it over um, to Mr. Roper for a couple minutes, and we will move on from there. So when Opportunity Zones came out, um, not only did Joanna Nelson spot it, she told us about it, and it kind of changed everyone's life in the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. So if you've ever seen the actual legislation, it is relatively short. It fits on single, single line, about two pages. And the idea of it uh, goes back to an Obama era, post-recession, get money off the sideline. Um, if you fast forward to the time in which the tax cut was being passed, um, the Tax Cut and Jobs Act was being passed, there was an issue getting individual senators uh, to jump on board. This was the final piece that was shoved into that mega bill that ended up pushing it over the line. And so what that legislation did is it allowed the state of New Mexico, the governor in particular, and at that time it was Governor Martinez, to select 25% of all qualified census tracts. And so if you, if you know New Mexico, you would think our whole state should be qualified, which a lot of states actually are. Some counties have their entire county qualified. Uh, Wyoming was able uh, to do their entire state. Our population is a little too high, so we weren't able to do that. Uh, but we do have uh, 249 eligible tracks. So when we identified this, we thought, holy cow, how are we going to do this? How are we going to cut it down to 63 with four of those 63 being contiguous tracks? You know, it's 59, really. What are we going to do? Um, but at the time, we kind of, we were able to look at it from, and I'm going to dork out because I'm the economist, from a mathematical standpoint and see, based on the number of counties we have and the qualified census tracts that each county has, you can kind of make a mathematical formula to determine who's going to get a census tract. So that was my vote. I got overridden because no one really understood it, just kind of like how it is now. Everyone's giving you that blank stare. Um, so our thought process was we're going to work with the counties and we're going to have the counties work with their cities and they're going to work on it. So the county's going to make a nomination. They may receive that nomination from a city within that county, and then it's going to feed up to uh, the state in which the Economic Development Department will compile it and send it over to the governor's office for them to approve or deny it or make changes because it was their decision. Um, out of those 249 uh, tracks, we had 128 submissions, which was about where we thought it would be. Um, but since then, Fast forward two years, we've had counties, cities reach out and say, whoa, we didn't know about this. We didn't know it was going to do what you're saying it's going to do. We want to redo. Um, and you're not the only people saying that. Uh, multiple states uh, around the country are wanting to redo. We are not. We think we took a very systematic approach of what we were doing, where we were looking at what New Mexico uh, needed and relied upon the counties to provide that information to the governor at the time. And obviously we are the Economic Development Department, so we are looking at capital investment coming in. Um, we are looking at projects taking place at the local level. And you've heard a lot about this shovel-ready idea. We were looking at a similar approach. It's how far along are your census tracts relative to other census tracts in terms of the planning, in terms of the preparation that has gone into this census tract, and then what capital investment do you need to really push you over the edge? So what opportunities on money can come in that's going to make this track in this county and this state that much better? So we had all the nominations come in. We were able to nominate, nominate 59 census tracks with an additional four being contiguous tracks. I have had conversations with people much smarter than me who have been looking at this contiguous track trying to trying to jam a change into legislation. And so I took that upon myself and said, I will reach out to our counterpart at uh, CDFI Fund, who works in the Treasury, who's overseeing this, and they sent me very specific language. The nomination is set in stone. We are not changing it. Please reference the rules. And so just so you guys are aware, they are not changing. They are not changing 
Um, the tracks, they're not going to change with the upcoming census either. Um, there is a, and I'm really dorking out, but it, it relates to how census tracks are drawn. There is a, a, a upcoming census in which they count every single individual, and then the states decide, uh, they draw congressional districts in which you fit in as an individual. That's what this was based off of, is 2011-2015 data went into the decision in 2017. <laughs> So a lot of the federal government has pushed back saying, how are we going to study this to see if it's successful, if we need to expand it, and now you know. They use 2011-2015 data, so that's what we will be using going forward as a benchmark is 2012-2016 data, and so on and so forth. Um, once our opportunity zones were selected, we began the process of education. Uh, the finance development team, headed by Juan, Joanna, and Joel, began hosting webinars in which we were frequent guests, or I was a frequent guest, and we were talking about the implications of this. Those are still ongoing. Those are still on our website. There is a lot of basic information that can make you feel extremely comfortable going forward whenever you run into your Deborah Burns of the world. And she's talking about, is this going to pencil? And you're like, what does that mean? We have tried to make it as simple as possible for you guys to understand what is happening. The most important thing that I've learned throughout this process is not to be a mark, and I know that's a really weird term, um, but we have seen communities, counties, and businesses, um, people come around and saying, we will get you an opportunity zone, give us $25,000 dollars we'll get you there. I'm gonna reiterate it again, opportunity zones are set in stone. Um, our department, um, to obviously put out that educational component besides the webinars, the traveling we did, uh, working with the cities and the counties. Uh, we put together the first iteration of a website with a very simple map, and now we are on iteration two of that map. And the whole mindset of the, the map, the website, is what is our role as a department, as a state? Some people believe, me included, that this is a privately driven piece of legislation where money is supposed to come from the sidelines and infiltrate these census tracts. That is the basic idea of it, but our thought process is how can we ensure that money is going to come to the state of New Mexico when we're competing against 25% of all other 49 states plus Puerto Rico. So our whole mindset has been basically the education component. Um, I believe the city of Albuquerque asked an AED asked a question earlier, you know, how do you do this? Take the time, read the three or four pages of actual legislation, understand what they're doing, and then put your brain in a vice and go read the 66 pages of the rules that came out from the Treasury. You will not understand them. I don't understand them, but it's a very good starting point so you can have these conversations and you can kind of drive the narrative in a way in which you're, you're having meaningf meaningful discussions. Um, the last thing you want to do is get up there and waste everyone's time. You want information to come to you, and you want to be able to disseminate that. That being said, that has been our goal from the beginning. Obviously, we're trying to educate. We are trying to connect communities, businesses, county, cities. The state is working with other states to make sure funding comes here. We think we've done a very good job today. If you look around the room, there are funds, there are CPAs, there are uh, technical assistance uh, providers that are around here. And those are the private companies. There's nonprofit organizations who can walk you through this process. There are federal agencies who are here who have a mandate to get money out if you're in an opportunity zone. There are state agencies who are here who are working together to help drive this into these zones. Uh, I believe the most important thing that I heard today was working with your elected official. Take that grassroots approach. It is the same mindset as qualified opportunity zones. You have to start local. You have to know who is in your area, who owns that land, and you have to continue to spread that information out. Most of the businesses here, you are going to have a weird uh, pseudo reality check coming in which some of your businesses may be viewed as this is a quick and easy, we're gonna jump in here, we're gonna get out of here. Others, you're gonna to have to get more creative. If you're looking to expand your business, you're gonna to have to look at what our state offers you, what the federal agencies offer you, and how the nonprofit sector can come in to help you with that expansion. The whole idea of this is to encourage the community to embrace the project so it can succeed. You know, it, 
that happens, if there is success and it does pencil, you're going to start seeing more money follow more money. Um, I, I made a comment earlier about um, some of the rural funds that are happening and how they're investing in Austin and, and San Antonio and you're like, oh, goodness, you know, what do we do that's, how, how do we get ourselves on that level where Albuquerque, our largest metropolitan area, isn't anywhere close to Austin? And that whole idea is what we've tried to provide you guys here today. We've tried to connect you to different resources that make projects very, very stackable. From private sector all the way to federal, state, and this nonprofit. The, the other issue is this technical assistance piece. And this is more specific to uh, a county or a municipality and then maybe a business, a specific business. Is I have this parcel of land, what do I do with it? Uh, the state of New Mexico is not going to be the ones who are driving to your area and holding your hand from, um, and I say the state of New Mexico, the Economic Development Department is not going to be the ones writing your presentation and writing your pitch for you. We have taken it upon ourselves with our website to connect you to all those resources so you're a click away from seeing how a prospectus is written. Bear in mind the prospectus is written for a rural piece, so when I was at the National Governors Association, I was working with George, uh, Georgetown University on doing a rural prospectus piece. So we're able to connect you to those different um, technical assistant providers, so you're able to move your project at the local level and get it to the next step. Now, our new website is separate from our department website. Our department website is goenm.biz. There is still very uh, basic educational uh, components to that about Opportunity Zones. In particular, on that goenm.biz page, you will see a simple breakdown of how a typical project works. You have $100 in unrealized capital gains. You realize those gains. You invest for 10 years. The tax base, or the tax amount that you owe actually decreases over 10 years. And so we put it out there in very clear writing that shows you what your tax liability will be after the fact. And then whatever you earn on top of that, after you have made your quality, qualified opportunity zone investment, it sits there for 10 years, whatever you earn is also tax free. So we do show that to you from a real simple 60,000 foot view and we provided you with individual uh, CPAs, funds, uh, uh, small business advisory groups, technical assistance to help guide you through those weeds. And so on our website, you'll see different resources that we have, a real high overview in which we have a portal for businesses, we have a portal for the communities, for investors, for partners. This is where you're able to actually get that information. You're able to see a list of funds that we have identified that are working in the area of New Mexico, in the region of New Mexico, and that are working um, on a specific asset class. So we've broken it down not only by where they're working geography, but what they're trying to work in. So you as a COG or you as a community are able to say, wow, this kind of fits our project. Let's reach out and, and see what we need. When I mean reach out, don't reach out to the investors. I think you've heard very clearly from Deborah today, don't pick up that phone until you know what's happening, until you have made this deal make sense, not only to yourselves, but to someone who doesn't understand what you're doing. This is just to ensure that your community is making the right decisions, and that is what the state is here to offer. Now, I'm gonna bring up Joanna Nelson, who's gonna kind of go into a little more of the technicalities of what we're doing, and why we're doing it, and who we're doing it for, so it can provide a little more assistance besides what you have to a state level breakdown. There is not gonna be many more times in which there are funds, there are regional partners, there are nonprofit organizations in a room in which you can pick that, and so Joanna, would you please explain your, your process going forward, what, what you have to offer, please, ma'am? <laughs> Joanna Nelson. Thanks. Thanks, Ryan. All right, are you all in the zone? Yes? All right, I love that term that Terry coined today. That's, that's a winner. Um, but uh, as Ryan mentioned, we want to make sure that you all have the resources that you need in order to connect to either funding or if you are a funder, connect to projects. So one of the highlights and one of the, the more useful things on the website is our map. 
And if you go to the website, it's on the first page, it's, it's um, really obvious, but you can see all of the 63 tracks are highlighted. When you click on a track, you can uh, see this link that says link to current projects. That will take you to our um, New Mexico Opportunity uh, project pipeline. So each track is going to highlight the specific projects that are being worked or their potential projects in that uh, region, in that, that specific track. So what you find is you find a project description, you find a project type, you find um, financial information. You can see that this is an estimate of how much this project will cost. This is the amount of money that the project has raised so far. This is what the project is looking for. And in addition to that, you can find the contact information. So that is key to um, if we do have out-of-state uh, projects or we have uh, funds that are looking for um, how to follow up with this project. The other interesting thing is, um, we've alluded to it during the, the session, is um, we have a lot of potential to attract uh, uh, funders that are interested more in a triple bottom line. They're not just interested in, in the returns. So um, we have the project types identified, whether it is this a housing project, is this an economic development project, is this a business development, is it healthcare? We're trying to organize the, the categorization of the, the project so that's easily identifiable. identifiable. So um, the next thing that, that you want to be sure that you know how to navigate on this site is how do you submit a project? So um, obviously communities, COGS, economic development agencies, uh, businesses, if you have an inquiry, if you have a potential project that you would like to submit to NMADD, you can go to our website and there's a few places that you can do it. Um, but specifically, if you click on this, this icon, um, you can submit your project. And that submittal process is very, very simple. We're asking for basic information um, that, that we're going to review. Once that, that information is reviewed, then we're going to push that out to, um, to our, our email list. And then ideally, if it's a, a feasible project, after our review process, we're going to put that on, the, on our pipeline and then make sure that it's coming up on the map. So that's another way that we're offering that connection piece. Oh, I didn't say this. What's the website so people can go to it? Oh, okay. Great question, Ryan. I'm glad that you asked. Um, it's nmopportunity.com. Hopefully everybody knows that. <laughs> if you go away with one thing, you know that website. And I do have to give props to EDAC from UNM. They were wonderful working with us. They were the ones that were working with Ryan early stage, getting the first iteration of the story map. And, and uh, our, our map, I would, I would, I'm going to brag, I think it's one of the best in the country. Um, if you scroll over it on our website, it doesn't drag, and, and um, we don't have superfluous data on there. So I think it, they did a great job. Another really uh, valuable asset, I think, that we have going on in the state in regard to Opportunity Zone is our funded group. So funded has been around a couple of years, um, and this is an informal group of state and federal entities that we get together quarterly and uh, discuss projects that are looking for funding, uh, and those are projects related to economic development or um, infrastructure. And um, at these meetings, communities are able to get feedback directly from the funders. So on this list, hopefully everybody can see it, we've got a pretty good list of who's who in New Mexico from state and federal uh, agencies that have money and they are looking for projects. So at the meetings, uh, communities are able to get feedback, they can connect directly to the funders and um, we've had a lot of success with Funded over the years, being able to collaborate with everybody at the same table at the same time. So it makes sense that Funded uh, become our, our official uh, Opportunity Zone interagency working group or task force. 
So what that means is that, um, and, and we've mentioned it a couple of times, very rarely is a project going to have 100% financing from, from an investor within an opportunity zone. So there's going to be a need to come up with other funding sources, need to collaborate with, with some different funding uh, programs. So fund it is available to uh, review those opportunity projects. Uh, once that project is submitted through our online portal, we can then push the project out to fund it, and there's your opportunity, there's your chance to connect directly with, with our, um, our funding entities, entities that are in the state. The, the new interesting thing about this is that this, this extends beyond federal and state agencies. We have um, the, the Santa Fe Impact Investing groups are represented, the COG directors are represented, our New Mexico regional reps are there. So you're getting a really wide range of, of expertise, insight, knowledge, experience um, that you can use in that technical assistance aspect to uh, work on your development, work on your planning, and finding uh, funding resources. So the, the process to apply to fund it, if you have an Opportunity Zone project, is the same. You just submit the, the project via the online portal, and then we'll get you connected to, to fund it. So we want to make sure that you understand how to use the most important aspects of the website. And I do have to qualify saying that our website is a, is a what would you, this is a D, DIY <laughs> project. We did it ourselves. It's not the most beautiful website that you'll see, but it has all the information uh, that you need. So you have to read it. Um, that's really important. Um, I've gotten a couple of calls of saying, you know, where, where do I find something? Um, if you do take a couple of, of minutes to actually read the website, there's a lot of really good information on there. But um, in terms of action items, follow-up items after this forum, um, we probably more than likely are going to have another forum at the beginning of summer, late spring. It's good to have in-person um, uh, networking opportunities. So all of that information will be available always on the website. And then the key is this Opportunity Zone email list that we have set up. So this is um, a, a really important tool for everyone interested in Opportunity Zones. When you sign up for this email list, that is putting you on a listserv that, well not a listserv, but that's putting you on our list that not only are you going to get the traditional updates and any news that's pertaining to New Mexico Opportunity Zones, but you're also going to get um, verified, reviewed Opportunity Zone projects that are looking for something. So this is a project that might be looking for financing or this is a, a fund looking for projects. You're going to get those inquiries pushed out to you. So this information obviously is really valuable to the people with, with funds, with, with financing that they're trying to deploy. It's, it's of interest to communities to stay abreast of, of projects that are happening in their, their region. So this is a really important tool um, and it's important for you to sign up. Uh, here again, you can submit your project online. really want to encourage you to, to do that. And then we're also going to be hosting quarterly webinars uh, in regard to Opportunity Zone education. So our next one, I think, is September 12th. Um, and that is with an organization out of, on the East Coast, um, the Governance Project. And it'll be a unique experience in the way that they have, uh, not only do they have a fund, hint, 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 and they're looking for projects, but um, they are able, they have a, a grant that they're able to offer technical assistance to communities. So they're going to walk you through the process of how do you take your idea, how do you, how are you strategic with your, your development, and go all the way from step one to, to finding financing. So we're really excited about that. They're going to do a webinar and then actually come to New Mexico. But you can sign up for that webinar. We'll have, we'll have the uh, upcoming ones listed, too. Um, 
But that's, that's more or less the action items, the follow-up items to keep in mind when you leave here. Um, we will be sending an email out today following up with some, we had some great questions, so we'll provide some information. Um, and we will have these links that you can, you can link to. Also, just want to remind you this presentation will be available online too. So use the website. If you have any feedback, let us know. Um, and I think, oops. And um, we have said over and over that you want to use our New Mexico Economic Development uh, Regional Reps. And that information is available on our website. You can see who is your regional rep. Hopefully you know that. Um, but you can find all of their contact information. And then our, we have a generic email, opportunity.zones at state.nm.us. And um, we are ready to help you. So reach out to us, use us. Um, we're, we're ready to, to get going. So does anyone have any questions for Ryan or myself about our, our website? Sure. Yeah, you know, is there a, uh, an inventory, an inventory of projects across the country so people can get an idea of what's possible to go into a uh, company zone? That's a really good question. Do you, does anyone know? I haven't seen a, a, a national pipeline. So there has not been an actual, actual pipeline that has been put together. Uh, a lot of the places, uh, in particular a lot of the states, uh, are still trying to catch up and try to inventory what they have. And so we have a list of, uh, of a ton of projects. I would say we are first and foremost out front. What you see a lot of are these large real estate deals, in particular a hotel in Arizona or a quick housing project in California. Those are the ones that are more nationally known, but there is not a pipeline of, of assets that are available for individuals to look at. What you have on there, if you go to our website, is you'll see what we're really looking to collect, uh, what the location, the census tract, the asset class that it falls in, those sorts of basic questions. Your project pipeline details, basically. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Any questions? Ryan? His question? He had asked if if we knew of a, a national pipeline that was in existence. And the answer was more or less we, we haven't seen one. But we have a statewide pipeline that's available. Sure. Novogratz website, novogratz.com, uh -huh. the CPA firm has been essentially involved since the beginning. They have a very good list of funds, about 200 funds long. It's probably the best place to find a pipeline of national projects. Uh, I'd be surprised if most states spend a lot of time doing that with all those that are being aggregated. Right, so and that's, that's a good point. And we link to them on our website. What's the name? <laughs> Novo Gratic, and you can actually, we don't have our, our website up, but you can find that on our website too. I think it's on the bottom of the website. And then I wanted to add too, um, there's a really good resource that the White House Office of um, Opportunity and Revitalization, that office that was created for Opportunity Zones, they just put out their book of federal programs um, that are offering opportunity zone incentives. So it's really insightful. You can look at, Trisha is here, I saw her. Um, like EDA, for example, you can see what, um, what is EDA offering? What extra kicker are they putting on, um, on their, their programs? So. We, we are to our extent, we're a pretty small department, but um, first phase is we're putting the information online. And through, through our research efforts, we've connected with a lot of funds across the country. So through those relationships, we're definitely, every chance we get, we're pushing the projects and, and pushing the efforts here in New Mexico, definitely. And any help, any, we're, we're all here and we're all advocates of, of New Mexico. One other thing is, I think Deborah hit on this, is, is the timing in which the money needs to be moved from your pocket to a fund to a project, and it is really quick, so you're starting to see funds reach out to states. Uh, we had a phone call, uh, uh, I believe it 
believe Monday, specific about what, what, what do we have as a state, where's our inventory. So we are starting to get uh, outreach from the funds themselves that are looking for it, uh, instead of what I had envisioned is we were gonna be just email blasting all these people. It's actually the opposite. You probably went over this, and I'm on your homepage, but where is the map on the website? Are you, are you on NM Opportunity? If you just scroll down, it's in the center of the page. It'll have a blue, it'll almost look blue, and you need to activate it. On a, if you're on your phone, you may need, if you're on your phone, you may need to activate your map. So if you scroll down to the center of the page, you'll see almost a blue screen with a little square in the middle. If you're on the mobile website, it's towards the bottom of the page, of the main homepage, it's actually right before you hit the bottom of the contact information stuff. Right before you hit the bottom, on the uh, before you hit the contact information, and. Um, it could be blue, and so if you just tap on that, you'll see a little icon in the middle, and that activates the map to allow you to do the searching function. But it is on there. Did you find it? We promise. It... <laughs> okay, he found it. It's there. That is correct, and, and to that point, um, you have heard invest by this year. Um, by the end of this year, you're going to miss it. And I'm, I'm really trying not to have you, you know, specifically dive into the rules, but that's not how it works. Um, there is provisions in there in which you can divert capital gains for 10 years from the point in which you receive them. So we are looking down the road in which this program will actually go away. It is codified by law. Um, so it would take an actual act of Congress to come and remove these um, from, um, from the roles themselves. But I, 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 I promise these are going to run until about the year at the latest you will see investment take place is about the year 2036 for someone to fully realize their gains. But that is going to take an actual investor who understands deferrals and understands how they're moving money through, through a real estate deal. So those are the more sophisticated deals that are coming in. But again, you can defer your capital gains. It doesn't need to be in today. But we are starting the process of the education and, and making sure you guys are aware. Great. Thank you all so much. And here's uh, the Economic Development Department Division Director, Mark Roper. Real quick. Before I uh, move on, I want to thank Johanna and Ryan. They, they put this whole thing together. Uh, we had, what, 160, 180 people in attendance today. I, I really appreciate the effort of uh, both of you. Thank you very much. I'm not going to take up a lot of your time because uh, we, need, we need to get to a really cool announcement and the Cabinet Secretary. But there's two quick points that I want to make. Uh, one is, uh, Terry touched on it earlier and kind of talked about the incentives in New Mexico. It's really important to understand that if you qualify for an incentive in the state of New Mexico with your project, you can stack those in an opportunity zone. There is no exclusion, nothing. So a lot of these things that you're seeing come out from other states about, oh, look, you can get this tax abatement or this tax. We're already doing it in the state of New Mexico. All of our incentives can stack up within an opportunity zone. Uh, so that's really important for everybody to understand. And I know we haven't gotten too far into the weeds. We've been 30,000 foot level with everything. Uh, but as you work on this, and there's some of you out there that know this, and then there's uh, people like my friend Juno that's always looking for a way to save money. Uh, you get to defer your gains the entire time it's invested in the fund. The longer it's in the fund, the less capital gains you pay on it. And the even greater thing, if you leave it in there for 10 years, the gain on the gain is gain free, no taxes. So there is a huge, huge incentive uh, to invest in these areas. So it's really important that as you work on your Opportunity Zone project, 
or if you're a community trying to uh, develop your opportunities in marketing, that you understand how those investments are so uh, moved through there so it can help you market your project well. So I'll stop with the weed stuff and it's my great pleasure and honor to welcome to the stand the Secretary of the Department of Economic Development, Alicia J. Keys. Thank you. I make them put J in there so that people uh, don't think that they're coming to see Alicia Keys and get really, really upset because they see me. Um, but thank you all for coming here. It's amazing that we have almost 200 people before Labor Day. And I think that above and beyond the knowledge that you have received today, just seeing everybody come together in this room and be a community, that is what New Mexico does best. We collaborate and we help each other. And Opportunity Zones are new and nobody knows everything about them. So it's really nice that you have shared your morning and your afternoon with us and shared your knowledge and really just come together to say, how can we do this best? And honestly, when I talk to people around the United States, New Mexico is doing this best. And um, that's super exciting because uh, oftentimes we are not on the top of those lists. So we're already seeing stronger personal income growth and the best economic expansion since before the recession. Our private sector growth in New Mexico now ranks number nine in the country, but we need to do more. And that is especially important to New Mexico, a small state where it has been historically difficult to attract outside investment. With Opportunity Zones, we're making it easier to do that. We have a plan, we have a program, we have an easily accessible website, which we have heard is one of the best in the country. And as Mark said, and a lot of people have said, this is because of Ryan and Johanna um, really coming together and doing this for our department. So um, we're very proud of this initiative and we are a resource to you. We're not gonna package your deal for you, but we are gonna do our darndest to help you in whatever capacity possible. So, uh, I want to thank a few more people. Uh, Mark Roper, who is um, our new division director, and he's been incredible. Um, this community um, has really accepted me that was not an economic developer, and our team has really come around and not just supported me, but supported each other um, with, and John Clark, getting him from the LFC um, was probably one of the luckiest things we ever had happen to us. Um, and all of our regional reps, so thank you all um, for being here and for being um, an amazing group of people to work with. We also have Danny Schlegel, I call him Danny, Daniel Schlegel, are you out in the office? Oh, here we are, there we go. So Danny used to work for the governor, still does, but he's transitioning over um, to small business office um, and policy. Um, you're gonna see him a lot hanging out with the EDD team. Um, we really feel like the governor has put a priority towards economic development and we're not only helping the big companies but we're going to help the little companies too that just have two or three employees. So as I said before, it's all about collaboration. We're working closely with local governments, economic development partners, nonprofits, private funders, and the U.S. agencies like the Small Business Administration. Thank you guys for coming out to make it easier than ever to learn about this investment. New Mexico also has something else outside of this group of people in this room and all the people that are supporting us. We have a governor who really believes in economic development and is not only putting her time and energy and money towards it, but she is focused on creating opportunities that stand out, that make New Mexico stand out. So today, I am announcing that New Mexico is the only state in the country to offer an additional financial incentive to those who invest in the Qualified Opportunity Zones in New Mexico. It is a $1 million bonus through our LIDA funds. So using the $75 million that we allocated from, that the, the legislature allocated for LIDA, we will have a close, which is our closing fund, New Mexico will guarantee an additional million dollars in grant funding to projects locating in an opportunity zone. 
if they meet criteria that was set by EDD and the governor. And so this is a little bit of, hey! So um, one of those is, the, this is the criteria. And we're gonna go ahead and send something out after this so you don't have to take notes. But it must fit within one of our nine priority investment sectors established by the governor. So that would be film and television, intelligent manufacturing, sustainable energy, cybersecurity, outdoor recreation, aerospace, value-added agriculture, biosciences, and global trade. You would think I'd be able to just rattle those off my head, but the fact that I had to read them, okay, I gotta work on that. Um, there's also a requirement for this extra million dollars that at least 2.5 million in annual payroll and a minimum investment of 15 million. So we were sitting around the table yesterday trying to think of a good name, and we're calling it the Million Dollar OZ Jobs Bonus. I wanted to call it the Million Dollar OZ Jobs Kicker, but Johanna told me that that sounded dirty. So we have decided on bonus. Um, New Mexico is doing this because this is really a once in a lifetime chance to invigorate rural and aging neighborhoods and our vital infrastructure. Every state has opportunity zones, but we have more commitment. We walk our talk. We want investors taking a break from Wall Street and bringing their money to this wonderful place that we call home. We have a window, and it's small, and we, we want New Mexico to be on the radar, so we are being aggressive. Thank you all for coming out here, for helping us understand what we've got in front of us and this opportunity, and for just being so gracious with your time. So thank you again, and we will follow up with, the, uh, with emails from Johanna and Ryan um, with questions that people had, uh, maybe a case study that people can, um, that investors can look at, um, and if you want anything else, then uh, please let us know. We are here to help you. Thanks again for coming. So everybody, that concludes the, the Opportunity Zone Forum. And just to reiterate, reiterate what the Secretary said, thank you for spending your day with us. I hope it was very beneficial to you, uh, to our exhibitors. I appreciate your time. I hopefully you made great connections. Um, have a safe uh, trap home. And we will be sitting around, uh, Joanna and I, probably for the next 20 minutes to help put things away. So if you have questions or want to connect with us, please let us know. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.